So we are studying Ezekiel, and we are in chapter 20 of Ezekiel. What a powerful lesson. What a powerful book. What a blessing we have been getting from this study of this prophecy. And brothers and sisters, as I alluded to earlier, I want to I wanna say now, uh, brothers and sisters, I am so convicted. I am so convicted, brothers and sisters. Um, the time is short. The time is short. I am just, the time is short. And, and I want to just be plain. I want to be plain and honest and truthful because brothers and sisters, my creator will hold me accountable. He will, I have to give an account to him for his spirit that he has given me, for his word that he has put on my tongue. I'm not concerned with any man's money. I don't care about any man's church. Excuse me. But I'm telling you right now, there's not much time left. And I'm also saying to you that there's many people that are going to be destroyed. And not because, not because the creator, you know, we, we are caught up in this false religions, uh, uh, most of us in Christianity. And, and we are taught, oh, God loves everybody. Let me tell you the truth. He loves those that love him. He loves those that respect him. He loves those that give him honor and glory and praise. He has enemies, brothers and sisters. I know people don't like to uh, think, uh, you know, we have been taught to, uh, you know, to, 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 to think uh, the way the media wants us to think or to think the way uh, churches want us to think. But let me tell you something. Most High has enemies, brothers and sisters. He has enemies. Okay. And the enemies are those that are enemies of his righteousness, of his truth, of his purity, of his holiness, enemies of his law, enemies of his statutes, judgments and commandments, enemies of his people. These are his enemies. And no, I don't have to take up a sword today or get a gun today or get any type of weapon today to fight anybody. All he is asking of us right now. There's going to come a time we have studied and we're going to see in the book of Ezekiel. There's going to come a time. Brothers and sisters, when we are going to take up arms, but it's a long ways off right now. The only armament we would require or he should I say he's going to require of us. The only armament he requires right now is the armament of his spirit to be covered, to be sealed by his spirit. He is holding everything up on this earth. I don't care what men are planning. It does not. Brothers and sisters, you and I know as we've been studying the scriptures, <laughs> what, what people are planning is of no consequence to the Most High. It is of no consequence to him at all. Time is in his hands. Time is in his hands. Our time is in his hands. You know, the Bible says that. Notice again, Psalm 71. Psalm 71. Notice what it says. Psalm 71. Psalm 71. I'm going, to I'm going to say something that's going to... <laughs> Most Christians are his enemies. The, the, the vast majority of Christians are his enemies. I'm just telling you straight. I know people don't want to hear that. And I'm not trying to create problems. I'm just trying to be honest and truthful with you. Why? Why are most Christians, why do I say most Christians are his enemies? Because most Christians are following a man-made religion. Man-made. It is not from the creator. The white Jesus did not come from the creator. The Baptist church, the SDA church, the Mormon, they didn't come from him. That's not his people. They are worshiping things that come and glorify man, brothers and sisters. That's the truth about it. 
I'm just trying to be honest. Now, among, among the people that are in these, these places, as we were, they are honest people. They are sincere people that belong to him. They just don't know what they're doing. Just like we didn't know what we were doing when we were there. But those religions don't belong to him. They're not his. They're not his at all. No, no. They're not his at all. And as we get closer, as we get closer and closer to the day when Messiah will return with power and glory. When he's going to return to destroy all these kingdoms as the Bible says. And we're going to read it. But before we do, let's turn to Psalm 71. Let's turn to Psalm 71. Praise the Most High, Yah. Psalm 71. Um, there's some powerful stuff in here uh, in Psalm 71. There's, there's, some, there's just some powerful stuff in here. Notice what it says. I'm going to read Psalm 71. I'm going to begin at verse 1. I'm going to begin at verse 1. I'm going to go from verse 1 down to verse 7. For, just for now. We're not going to read the whole thing. But from verse 1 to 7. Notice what it says. Psalm 71 from verse 1 to 7. In thee, O Yahweh, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Let me never be put to confusion. Excuse me. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Cause me to escape. Incline thine ear unto me and save me. Be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, O my Most High, out of the hand of the wicked, out of the hand of the unrighteous and cruel man. For thou art my hope, O Yahweh Most High. Thou art my trust from my youth. From thee, by thee, have I been holding up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall con be continually of thee. I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong Refuge, brothers and sisters, it is no accident. It is no coincidence that you and I have been born at this time. It is no accident. It is no coincidence that you and I have been born at this time. Brothers and sisters, this is the end of all things. I'm telling you. We are at the end now. Uh, as I said, the next Jubilee is 2027. This next seven years is going to be very, very interesting. And, and I want to be clear when I say that I am not predicting the return of the Messiah in the next Jubilee. I, I do believe that he will return prior to the seven year period after that, like before 2034. I believe with all my heart, he's going to be back here before 2034. And so, but this next seven years is going to be very interesting. And when we get to that year of the Jubilee, that's going to be very, very interesting. And so, um, the time is now. The time, the time is now, brothers and sisters, for us to be prepared. Notice again, I'm going to read the same Psalm, Psalm 71, from verse 15. From verse 15 down to verse 19. Notice again. Psalm 71, 15 to 19. My mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation all the day. For I know not the numbers thereof. I will go in the strength of the Most High Yahweh. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even thine only. O Most High, thou hast taught me from my youth, and hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Now also when I am old and gray-headed, O Most High, forsake me not, until I have showed thy strength unto this generation, and thy power to every one that is to come. Thy righteousness also, O Most High, is very high, who hath done great things, O Most High, who is like unto thee. Yeah. See, this is the theme 
This is the theme. In these last days, brothers and sisters, the theme, and this is again, you know, I, I, the spirit of the Most High impresses me to give signs. Every time I speak, I'm, uh, uh, the Most High Spirit shows me to give a sign. This is another sign. Those in the truth, listen to me carefully, brothers and sisters, those in the truth are only concerned with the glory and righteousness of the Father. We are not concerned with the glory of man. We are not concerned with man's righteousness. Our only reason for existence is to give glory and honor. Notice what the psalm says. In thy, deliver me in thy righteousness. In thy righteousness, my mouth shall show forth thy righteousness and thy salvation. I will make mention of thy righteousness, even thine only. See? Thy righteousness also very high. You see how many times, you see what I'm saying? So brothers and sisters, we're living in a time when the true people of the Most High are only concerned. They're not concerned with money. They're not concerned with fame. They're not concerned with control. They're not concerned with churches and denominations and their glory. They're concerned with one thing, one thing only. And nothing else takes up the attention. It's the glory of of the Father, it's His righteousness because brothers and sisters, as we know, and I will say it again, I will keep saying it as long as the Most High puts it in my tongue, I will tell you, the most important doctrine in the Bible is the doctrine of justification by faith. And that doctrine causes the glory of the Most High, it causes His righteousness to be revealed. That's the true gospel. It causes His righteousness to be revealed. And the object of bringing forth the 144,000 is to cause them to warn the earth of the coming judgments, but also to show forth the glory of the Father. You remember what the Messiah said. He said to the Father, glorify thy name. And the Father said, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Remember that? He said it in John chapter 12. He said, Father, glorify thy name. Where is that? Let me look at it. Gospel of John chapter 12. Gospel of John chapter 12. Here it is, here it is. Gospel of John chapter 12. Notice what he says. I'm going to begin at verse 23. <clears throat> well, before we let me, let me go, let me go back to um to verse 19. And I'm going to read from verse 19 down to verse 32. Actually, verse 33, from 19 to 33. Notice what it says. Yeah, I'm going to stay in John chapter 12 for a second here. From verse, from verse 19 to verse 33, notice what it says. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing? Behold, the world is gone after him. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip which was a Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Yahweh. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and, An and again Andrew and Philip tell Yahweh. And Yahweh answered them, saying, The hour is come. The Son of Man, that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life, shall lose it. He that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I into this hour. Father, glorify thy name. And there came a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said, it thundered. Others said, an angel spake unto him. Yahweh said, answered and said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. 
This said he signifying what death he should die. Look, brothers and sisters, here's Messiah. Here's Messiah, the very son of the creator. This is Messiah who is the express image of his father. This is Messiah who came to bring glory. His only purpose, brothers and sisters, make no mistake. Yeah, he came to seek and to save that which was lost. But you know why he came to seek and to save that which was lost? Because in doing that, he was bringing glory to his father. And he said, Father, glorify my name. Glorify thy name. And, and he, what he was saying is, I'm getting ready to die. I'm getting ready to die. But, but it's all good. It's all good. Why? Because I'm bringing glory to the Father. And by my death, many will be saved. And I want you to notice. I want you to notice when we first read. It said the Pharisee said, the Pharisee said, see how you prevail? Nothing. Behold, the world is going out after him. You, let me explain this. And then right after that, uh, the Greeks, Greeks that were among them. We're seeking for Yahweh Shah. Look, the scribes and Pharisees were the leaders of the Israelites, and they were leading them astray. Listen, they were the leaders of the Israelites that the people trusted in, were leading them astray. And the truth from this representation of the Father, the truth incarnate, righteousness in the flesh, was causing people that were seeking the truth to move away from the leaders. And they did not like that because that was costing them influence and money. And that's all they cared about. Okay. And they said the world is going after what they really was talking about was the world of the Hebrews. Because it was the Israelites. That he, remember now, I just want to remind you, Messiah hadn't been talking. He wasn't talking to everybody. He spent all his time in Israel. He wasn't in Europe talking to people. He wasn't in Rome talking to nobody. He was in Israel. And the Israelites were coming after him. And then even the Gentiles, when the Gentiles came, that's when he said the hour has come. Okay? The Gentiles came looking for him. He said the hour has come. The hour has come. Okay, brothers and sisters? Because y'all need to understand, it's the same as now. You see... The Romans dominated the earth at that time. It was, the, it was Rome that dominated the earth at that time, just like now. And at that time, because Rome was given dominion, the Roman citizens dominated the planet. Hey, we got the similar situation now. So for the Greeks to come looking to this poor, dusty, black Israelite, he said, the hour has come. The, the hour has come. See? See? Just like now. Just like now. Just like now. And then he said, glorify your name. See, brothers and sisters, Messiah, above all things, Messiah is an example to us. That's what he is. He came in the spirit and divinity of the Father to be an example of of what we're supposed to be like in the Father's righteousness. You know, one thing bothers me about this text. You know, I'm reading this, this King James Bible and they got Messiah's words in red. But they need to have the Father's words in red here. You see what I'm saying? They, I mean, they, when, when he says, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again, they should have put that in red. Because that's who Messiah came for. He came talking for the, for the glory of the Father. When the Father speaks, that should be in red. But that's all right. We know it's who it is, right? He said, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. And then he was about to be put to death, but he was speaking of the glory of his father. And brothers and sisters, that shows you all he cared about was the glory of his father. And brothers and sisters, you know, you and I, we would like to be that way. We would like to be that way. But the flesh... And our weakness stops us from being that way. But it's all good. Why do I say it's all good? Because the more we seek the same spirit that Messiah was made from, the more we seek the Father's spirit, the more he's going to make us just like that. He's going to make us into a brethren of Messiah. The firstborn of many brethren. He's going to make us like Messiah. In that regard, we're going to only care about the glory of the Father, even if it means death. We're only going to care about the glory of the Father.
And whatever he have us to do, whatever he have us to say, that's what he have us to do and say. And we praise him. Notice again, Gospel of John chapter 12. I want to read these words. Watch this, brothers and sisters, because this is where we, we need to be striving. We need to be surrendering to this. Watch closely. Gospel of John chapter 12. Gospel of John chapter 12. From verse 43 down to verse 50. Gospel of John chapter 12 from 43 to 50. Notice what it says. Yahweh cried and said, I'm sorry. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of Yahweh. That's where we're at today. They love the praise of men more than the praise of Yahweh. And Yahweh shall cry and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. He that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself. I have not spoken of myself, but the father which have sent me, he gave me the commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the father said unto me, so I speak. Brothers and sisters, that's where we need to be. That's where we need to be. And you know what? It, we got a ways to go, but that's all good because you know what? He's going to finish that work. He's going to finish that work in us. He's going to finish it. Okay. He's going to finish that work. All he needs from us is just that, just that Akaf, just that sister desire. All he needs is us to desire his spirit, to desire to be a vessel fit for the father's use. That's all he needs from us. That's all he needs. He's going to finish the work. You remember what he said? He said, my word shall not return unto me void. But shall accomplish the thing which I please and shall prosper in the thing where to I send it. You see, brothers and sisters, when I say that word prosper, we've been so brainwashed. We start thinking dollar bills, right? I mean, right? We start thinking, oh, prosper. That means I'm going to get the bends. I'm going to get this. But you see, when you belong to the most high, when you truly belong to the most high and I say prosper and I say prosper, you should be thinking perfect righteousness, when I say prosper, you should be thinking perfection of holiness and purity and truth. That's what you should be thinking. See, get that brainwash out your head, that brainwash Federal Reserve note. Get that out your head because he ain't got nothing to do with that. That's not a him. He's not worried about that. Let the heathen worry about the money. Let them worry about the money. Okay. When he talk about prosper. Boy, you want to be drip. You want to be dripping wet with his spirit. You want to be so filled with his spirit that when you just walk the road, people just notice and people just just draw because of the father. You want that. That's what you want now. You want your shadow to be used of the father to heal people. That's what you want now. That's what you really want. OK, I right? I'm not trying to brainwash you. I'm just telling you the truth. Right. I mean, right. Y'all catching me, right? I'm not trying to brainwash. I'm just telling you the truth. Most high bear witness. May, may his spirit bear witness. May his spirit bear witness. I, I don't care about no man's money. I don't care about no man's position. I don't care about no man's company, no man's job, no man's church, no man's corporation, 501c3. I don't care about no man's camp. All I want is the Father's glory. That's it. That's it. That's it. And I, I myself have never been a perfect servant. No, no, no. Fall many times, been spanked many times, and I praise him for the spanking. I praise him. Without it, I could not be saved. But I know one thing. He has called me to teach his word. He has brought me forth to teach it. He has called me into existence for the very purpose of teaching his word. And so i got to tell the truth, and I'm telling you. Right now, the time is short. We don't have that many years left. People are sleeping, man. People are sleeping. And you know what? I'm not concerned with false prophets. 
I'm really not. You know why? I'm only concerned in as much as they draw the sheep of the Most High to them. But I'm not concerned with their words because their words are going to fall empty. Like, for example, this 1619 to 2019 thing. Father ain't going to do nothing. You're not going to see nothing happen from him this year regarding that. Because that, 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 you know why? It's a false prophecy. It's a false prophecy. What you're going to see this year is more trouble. That's what you're going to see, more trouble. That's what you're going to see. I can tell you that. You're going to see more trouble, more suffering, more death, more disease, more corruption. That's all you're going to see. You're going to see that in 2019. Mm -hmm. You're going to see more oppression, more brothers thrown in jail, more brothers shot in the street. That's what you're going to see in 2019. And I ain't even got to be a prophet to tell you that. All I got to do is read the word because it's right there. All right. So we don't have to, we don't have to worry about false prophets. What we need is the truth. We want to make sure we're in the Father's spirit of truth and righteousness for his glory, for his name's sake. Let's look at Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. We read this many times, but it's, in, you see, inspiring words, right? Do you agree if I say inspiring words you want to read over and over again? You, is that true or not? If, if you see something that inspires you, something that, that, uh, that, that causes your heart to be filled, right? You just want to keep reading it, right? I mean, you just, you want to keep, and that's what I'm trying to say. The, the Bible is filled. It's filled from end to end <laughs> with inspiring words because the whole thing is by the Father's Spirit, right? So, so there's words in there that when you catch them, when you catch them and, they, and they're relevant to what you're dealing with, man, you need to read that over and over again. You need to hang on to that. That word is like the lifeboat. It's like the raft. It's like the saving grace that's going to get you through. You understand? Because it's his word. And again, his word will not return unto him void. Notice Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. From verses 1 to 4. Revelation chapter 7 from verses 1 to 4. He's holding up the whole thing. <laughs> he holding up the whole thing. See, I don't care what Donald Trump or, 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 or Mitt Romney or Barack Obama or the conservatives or the Democrats or the Republicans. or the, It don't matter what the UN is doing. It don't matter what Rome is doing. He holding up everybody's plans for one thing. Notice again, Revelation chapter 7 from verse 1 to 4. Notice what it says. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living Yahweh. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our Most High in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And they were sealed in hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Yasha. Oh, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. This hundred and forty-four thousand. Now that's what I think is coming in, in the next Jubilee. I think they're going to be clearly brought forth in the next Jubilee to bring this final message over that last seven year period. I, th I think this, this next Jubilee, I think that's what we're really going to see. We're going to see them being brought forth with a power. The power is going to be falling out at that time. See, right now, brothers and sisters, right now, as I'm speaking to you, the father's preparing us. Right. I mean, if you've been walking in this truth for a minute, you understand how the father has led you here. Right. I mean, it's not like you just accidentally came into this truth all your life. He's been leading you, he been leading you all your life through good, through bad, through ugly. He's been leading you all your life. So you got right here. You got right here. OK. Right. And he's now he's developing. He's leading, guiding, developing your developing your character. So why? Why? So that he can show forth his righteousness and his truth through you. And brothers and sisters, as I said, he can give us no higher gift than the seal of his spirit. That's the, that's the, see, that's why Asatan is lost forever. Because Asatan was once, as we're going to read in Ezekiel 28, he was once the anointing cherub that covereth. He was, he was one of the, you know what that means? When I say anointing cherub that cover, anointed cherub that cover, look, look. When you understand the sanctuary in terms of what 
Moses was told to build and how it was a copy of the true, that Hebrew tells us it was a copy of the true sanctuary, you understand that in, in the heavenly courts, in the third heaven, see the third heaven that Apostle Paul, uh, Shaul was, was shown, in that third heaven, there's a sanctuary. There's a there's a, a seven golden candlesticks we saw it in Revelation. There's a table of showbread. There's a black Messiah with woolly hair, right? There's an ark of incense, an altar of incense, and the prayers go into a place called the most holy place, where where the Father is between two angels called cherubim, and right in front of at the at the foot of the Father's throne are the seven spirits, and with the seven spirits, the ark of his covenant, which we saw in the seventh seal, the seventh uh, trumpet, excuse me. We saw in the seventh trumpet, the Ark of the Covenant. There, with the covenant inside it, with the seven spirits before it, with the Father, and there's two angels. And we know the Bible showed us there's four beasts holding up the Father's throne. Now, them two angels on either side of the Ark, okay? Those are the covering cherub, the covering cherub. On either side of the ark. Only two of them. Asatan used to be one of them. See, you got to be a hot. That's why, you see, that's why you remember when Gabaal or Gabriel came and he spoke to Zechariah and he told him, he said, you're going to have a son. Your wife going to have a son. Your wife Elizabeth going to have a son next year. And he doubted. And Gabriel answered. Gabriel got a little uh, uh, indignant. And Gabriel said, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of Yahweh. And I was sent to give you this message, brother. And because you didn't believe me, your tongue going to be stopped until the day that these words come to pass. Because you didn't believe what I said. Because he said, I'm Gabriel that's standing in the presence of the Most High Yah. Well, see, that Gabriel is an anointed cherub. He's an anointed cherub. You understand? He's one of the high ones. You understand? And so here you had Asatan was one of those two. He was on the other side at one time. He was there. And he rejected in order to try to become God himself. That's why he can never come back. Because it's like, it's like a woman. You sisters know. When you give a man your body, right? I mean, when you give a man your body, right? I mean, when you're an honorable sister and you give a man your body. And he turns around and dogs you out. Now, you know. You, you know you mad. That love turns to hatred quick. You hear what I'm saying, right? Y'all y'all got me, right? Y'all feeling me? You know what I'm saying, right? You, you give him your body. I mean, you can't do nothing more than that but wrap yourself around the brother. And now the brother turn around and spit on you, turn around and dog you out. I mean, now that love turned to hatred because you done gave him all you can give him. You gave him yourself. You hear? So now the father has, when he put his spirit on us, he can't give us nothing higher than that because his spirit is himself. That's him. That's why Messiah said he that have seen me have seen the father. Messiah not saying he's the father. What he's saying though is he came from the father's spirit. He is a representation of the father's righteousness. So now you rejecting him, you rejecting the father. It's just so when he put his spirit on us, that's about the highest level he can do for us. That's about the highest thing he could do. He can put nothing better on us than his spirit. That spirit that he puts on us, that spirit is more than just something called you to foam at the mouth and yell in so-called tongue. No, no, no. That spirit puts holiness and righteousness on you. That spirit puts peace on you. That spirit puts joy on you. That spirit calls you to be able, as, as Job said, by your light, I walk through darkness. That's what that spirit does for you. That's what Job said. That's what his testimony was. By his light, he said, I walk through darkness. You understand? So he can't, he can't give us nothing higher than that. So when he puts that on a person, that's why the Bible says he that had been anointed like that and then turns away, you can't save him. There's nothing you could do for him. Because the father done put out everything he could put out on you. And there's nothing else he could put out. Beside his spirit. And that's why, as he said to, to Noah, my spirit shall not always strive with man. That's very powerful. My spirit shall not always strive with man. That's what he said. And that's what's happening now. See, his spirit also, before he rests on an individual, he brings conviction to an individual. See, he don't rest on you right away, but he brings you conviction. People call it consciousness, right? Or conscious. He's bringing conviction. He's pricking your heart about what's right and what's wrong. 
He's trying to guide you in the way you should go. But, you know, we're so ignorant, we can't always pick up on it. So he's trying to work with us and bring us and convict us. But when people turn away from his spirit year after year, decade after decade, generation after generation, they turn away from his spirit. They're going to come a day when the majority, two thirds of the Hebrews, five sixths of the heathen. He's going to stop calling you. He's not going to strive with you anymore. It's at that time, Asatan will have complete and entire control. That's when his spirit takes complete and entire control. And that's why at that time it's called a time of trouble such as never was. Daniel chapter 12. Notice again, Daniel chapter 12 from verse 1 down to verse 3. Daniel 12 from actually from 1 to 4. Daniel chapter 12 from 1 to 4. Notice what it says. And at that time shall Makaal stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that same time. And at that time thy people, he's telling Daniel, shall be delivered every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to what? To righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Stars shine in a dark place, don't they? Huh? Stars stars shine in a dark place as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Let me give you some news. We are at the time of the end right now. We are at the time of the end. I'm not exaggerating. I'm just telling you the cold, straight truth. We are at the time of the end. Knowledge is increased. And you're not. we're not just talking about knowledge of computers and knowledge of of aeronautical engineering and knowledge of that. I'm not talking about that. Knowledge of the word. Knowledge of the truth. You see, brothers and sisters, Messiah said, Messiah said, everything hidden is going to be revealed. Everything that was whispered going to be spoken openly. That everything and everything is being revealed. Everything is being revealed. Layers are being taken off and truths are being exposed. And what's going on? We are being taught and brainwashed. We are being brainwashed. To, to root for the lie. To make the lie, to say the lie is good. It feels good if it's a lie. Oh, it feels so good if it's a lie. I'd rather believe in Santa Claus. Let me have Santa Claus. Don't take Santa Claus from me. Don't take Santa Claus from my children. Oh, Halloween. Oh, it's all Hallows Eve. Oh, it's a demonic thing. But please don't take the candy from the children. Don't do it. Oh, we are so liking the lies. Oh, please, the Easter eggs and the bunny rabbits. Oh, those chocolate Easter eggs are so sweet. And boy, I got to get my Easter outfit. Oh, we are taught to love the lie, to think it's sweet, to enjoy it. So that when somebody come and tell you the truth, oh, you're angry at them. Oh, you're angry. You don't like to hear that. You messing, you busting my bubble, man. I got plans. You messing me up. See? But they that turn many to righteousness shall be as the stars forever and ever. Praise the Most High, Yah. That's where we're at. So now, we're in Ezekiel chapter 20. (laughs) I brought all that to bring us to Ezekiel chapter 20. Okay? And we have been reading so far. You remember now, we studied how, when we studied, first studied the first few verses of this chapter. I think we got to, what, what, chapter verse 14? Something like that. I think we got to, like, verse 14. Well, we noticed, I want, let's just review what we've already studied. When we studied this, we saw that our fathers were, were in Egypt. You know, Joseph came down in there in chains. And the Most High blessed him and opened up the way for our father, Yaakov, who became Yasha'al and his children, the 70 that came with him to go down into Egypt, into Mizraim, into the land of Ham. Into the land of Ham they went and they were in, in there for 200 years. Okay, they, they come down. Uh, uh, Abraham, our father, was called out of Ur of the Chaldees. You know, this is deeper than y'all don't mind if I just get I'm going to just get a little bit deeper for you just a second. Okay, just bear with me. Bear with your brother for a second. Okay, just bear with me. Ur is the word for light. 
Okay, wait, wait, wait. Ur means light. Okay, I'm just telling you. Abraham came out of Ur of the Chaldees. He came out of the light of the Chaldees, the light of Babylon. Okay, he came, he came out of the light from Babylon and was sent to Canaan land by the creator. Wait, wait. Our father come out of the light of Babylon. So, so we are being called out of the light of Babylon. Y'all catching that? We being called out of the light of Babylon. Right? Just like our father Abraham. And it's right. He was called from a false light. To go to the truth. We are being called from a false light to go to the truth. And you know what the Bible said? He said, I'm not going to go to the scripture. When you get a chance, go read Isaiah 50. He said, I called Abraham and Sarah. He said, go to the, to, to the rock from whence you are cut. He said, because I called him alone and I blessed him. And what do you mean by that? He said, I called him out of false light into truth and he alone came. He heard me and he followed me. We are in the same situation. Don't ever think that you're going to be with a whole bunch of people following the truth. Uh-uh. No. Although a third of us, you know, I was I was telling my wife today, you know, I'm a bit of a numbers person. A bit of a numbers person. So I, I look at it like this. United States of America. They tell us there's approximately 300 million people in the United States of America. Bear with me. There's approximately 300 million people in the United States of America, right? Approximately 300 million. They say that approximately 60%, 60%, 60% of those 300 million, okay, 300 million are Caucasian. Caucasian. Them, them are the people that come from Europe, okay? So about 100, 180 million of the 300 million are Caucasian, okay? Approximately 45 million, approximately 45 million of the 300 million are straight Hebrews. They call them quote unquote African Americans. That doesn't include the Hebrews that come from, you know, the Spanish countries. I'm not even including them. I'm just making this simple for the sake of, you know, for the sake of the example. So, so the Bible tells us two thirds of the Hebrews going to be cut off. Two thirds of the Hebrews and one third he's going to keep. And he said when he, that's in Zechariah, he said, I'm going to bring that one third through the fire and they're going to be my people and I'm going to be their God, right? So if you take 45 million, you divide it into three, that's 15 million. So that means 30 million of us going to be cut off and 15 million are going to make it, right? If that's true, right? See? So wait, but wait, he said, I'm going to cut off from, from Gog and Magog. I'm going to save one six of you. I'm going to save one six of you. The rest of the five, six of y'all are going to be cut off. I'm going to save one six of you. So if you take 180 million and divide it by six, you get 30 million. So even one six of them, 30 million, is bigger than one third of us, 15 million. So we're going to still be the smaller number, see? But we're going to be the blessed number still, see? See what I'm saying? Y'all catching that? See? So, so we being called out of the false light of Babylon into the true light. We're not going to be in big groups, even though that sounds like a lot of people. Not going to be in big groups. Going to be very small. A couple of us here and there. Okay, 144,000 going to be scattered throughout the earth. A couple of us here and there to bring forth this message of truth. And people are going to be called out of Babylon, out of Ur of the Chaldees, into the light of truth. And, and by themselves, they must stand. See, they're going to have to stand by themselves. All the prophets stood alone. All the prophets stood alone. No prophet. You don't see none of the prophets standing with a whole bunch of people. Uh-uh. Allah or Elijah, he stood alone. John the Baptist, Yakana, he stood alone. Ezekiel stood alone. Jeremiah stood alone. Yeshaya or Isaiah, he stood alone. Messiah himself said, y'all are all going to leave me alone. But I'm not alone because my father's with me. All the prophets at one point end up by themselves. Standing for the truth of the spirit that the father has put on them. So brothers and sisters, that's us. That's us, each one of us. That's why the celebration is going to be so great when we come together on the sea of glass. Can you imagine all the brothers that stood alone, all the brothers and sisters that stood for the truth, all the brothers and sisters that gone through centuries of oppression. We're going to be blessed. We're going to be blessed. Those of the Gentiles that had to go through the pain, like Bathamon going through bodily pain all the time. You know Bathamon, they going through that pain. Most high preparing you for the kingdom when you're not going to have no pain no more. You got to go through some. 
So he's putting you through that. All the Gentile. You see? Or Isha, Shama, the stuff she went through, Isha, he put you through that because he's getting ready to bring you to glory. He got to let you, he got to let you see all of that ugliness so that you can know what we all dealt with. Because you, 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 you understand what we dealt with. So he bringing you now, when you get into the glory, you totally get it. You understand? You totally get it. Y'all are blessed. Praise the most high God. Praise his name. Got to understand. Okay, we're not blessing this world's goods. It's with the Father's Spirit. It's, you know? So, in Ezekiel chapter 20, our fathers were called, Abraham called the Ur the Chaldees. He went forth. He bring, then all of a sudden he have, he have Yasha'ak or Isaac. Yasha'ak have Ya'akob who became Yasha'ak. They went down into Egypt. He had them go into that nation. He had them go into that nation. Okay, he had them go there. And and after <clears throat> 200 years, total of 430 from the time Abraham left the light of Babylon, from the time he left the light of Babylon to the time they left Egyptian bondage was 430 years. And it was 400 years from the time Isaac or Yasha'ak was weaned at age five when he told, he when the Most High told Abraham, send that other woman, the bond woman, the Egyptian woman, send her and her son away because I'm going to bless this child and Yasha'ak. Is your seed going to be called? Not in Yash, Yashma'ah, in, in Ismail. No, in Isaac, your seed going to be called. So send Ismail and his mother away. He said, but that's my son. He said, it's all right, I'm going to bless him. And he did. He blessed Ismail with 12 sons. Ismail had 12 sons. Okay, he became a great nation. Went down, married some Egyptian women. Okay, some, 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 some women from the tribes of Ham. And hooked himself and, 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 and had 12 children. He was blessed. But the promised blessing, the eternal blessing, was through Isaac. And so here, he had them in the land of Ham. And then uh, the, the, the message came, let my people go. And, and the leaders of the land of Ham said, no, we don't, who, who, we don't believe in your God. We're not letting you know where. You stay here. You work. You go, get, you go make that brick. Go make that brick. Right? But then... Through many judgments, through many trial and judgments, he delivered his people and destroyed that whole nation for the deliverance of his people. That, brothers and sisters, listen carefully, that is a sign. It happened, but it's also a sign of what we're getting ready to go through. You know, he went down there. Why did he destroy? Was the Most High just interested in, in bringing plagues on Egypt for the sake of bringing plagues on Egypt? No. It's because his people was there. See, his people was there. And they were oppressing his chosen people, the children of his boy, the children of his boy, Abraham. They were oppressing them. So now because of that, they caught the wrath. Well, now we know that the scriptures show us that we have been scattered in the whole earth. Every place the Hebrews have been scattered, those nations have oppressed them. And the nations that have oppressed the Hebrews, wherein they have been scattered, and they are now in minorities all over the earth, they're going to catch the same wrath. It's going to be plagues on them, just like it was on Egypt, except now it's worldwide. And that's why he says in his word in Jeremiah 30, I will bring a full end, he says, upon all the nations where I have scattered you, but I will not make a full end of you. In other words, every place... That I scattered you into, like y'all was in Egypt, they're going to catch the destruction just like Egypt did. But I'm not going to have that happen to you. I'm going to take you out. I'm going to punish you in measure. I'm not going to leave you unpunished. But I'm going to bring you out. I'm going to chastise you like a man chastises his son. I'm going to bring you out. See? So, but look, look. I don't want y'all to think. Just because we know, I said at the beginning, he has enemies. He does have enemies. There's no question. But let me explain something to you. Even among his enemies, there are people that are going to be saved. I know people don't want to hear this, but you know what? I, like I said, I can't concern myself with what the brothers think. I got to concern myself with what the father thinks. Even among the heathen, 
there are going to be people that are saved. Look, we got some here. We got some right here in this room right now. There are people that were grown up among the heathen, grown up among rednecks, grown up among among perverted people and, and among the heathen. And here they are. That ain't no accident. That ain't no accident. Okay? That's a sign. All right? That's a sign. So there's going to be more among the heathen. But they got to go through what they what these people went through. And that's why what you're going to notice as we study, if you recall, he's the Most High told us through the prophet Ezekiel. Notice what he said. He said, remember what he said? He said, uh, where was it? Oh, well, let me go. Let me go down here. This is verse. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Notice verse, um, verse six, seven, and and uh, for, from verse six to nine. From verse six to nine. Notice what it says here, because you're going to see this theme repeated throughout. Chapter 20, okay? And, that, and I want to bring that out here as we're getting ready to continue in chapter 20. Notice what it says. In that day, he said, that in the day that I lifted up my hand unto them to bring them forth out of the land of Egypt, or Mizraim, into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands. We're going to talk based on that in a second. Then said I unto them, cast ye away every man the abomination of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am Yahweh, your most high. But they rebelled against me and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes. Neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Watch this, watch this. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Now, that's important right there. He said, I was going to smack them around. I was going to really, I was going to spank them good in, while they was in Egypt. But I held back. Because of the heathen they were around. Because of the people they were around. Because they were in the sight of these heathen. I didn't want to do it in front of them. I didn't want to do it for my holy name in front of them. Why Why is he so concerned? Listen, it appears he's kind of concerned with what the heathen are seeing. Why is he so concerned with what the heathen are seeing? You know why? Because there's going to come a time in the kingdom that there's going to be heathen that's going to serve him. They're going to serve him. Listen carefully. Brothers and sisters, please listen carefully. The heathen are going to serve the creator based on their observation. Listen carefully. Based on their observation of how the creator handled his chosen people. Wait a minute. Are you his? You heard what I said? They're going to be, they're going to be, it's going to be based on the observation of how they saw him handle his chosen people. That's why you're going to see this theme throughout the book, throughout this chapter of chapter 20. It's a long chapter. It's one of the longer chapters in Ezekiel, I think with 49 verses. And you're going to see that. Throughout this chapter, he's going to say, I work for the heathen, I, for my name's sake, for the heathen that among whom they were. Why is he concerned with that? Because among them heathen, he's trying to show the heathen through his people, through his handling, his dealings with his chosen. He's showing the heathen who he is. He's showing the heathen who he is and how he's dealing with his chosen people and why. Huh? And through that, they're going to serve him. They're going to serve him. That's why the book of Revelation that's why the book of Revelation says very plainly. I want you to notice. And we're going to see that also in the book of Ezekiel. But in the book of Revelation, it says very plainly. Notice again, Revelation chapter 21. Revelation 21. We'll come right back there to Ezekiel. Revelation chapter 21. Notice what it says. Revelation chapter 21. We're going to begin from Revelation 21, from verse 24 down to verse 27. Revelation chapter 21, from verse 24 down to verse 27. Notice what it says. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth. 
neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Are you catching that? See, brothers and sisters, you catching that? So you see the nations here in Revelation when it says the nations of them that are saved, the glory and honor of the nations. He says, you see what I'm saying? What that is, is the, if you look up that word, nations, it's heathen. Uh, it's Revelation chapter 21 from verses 24 to 27. Revelation chapter 21 from verses 24 to 27. That word nations is heathen. The heathen, the heathen of them which are saved. The heathen of them which are saved. And they bring the glory and honor of the heathen that are saved. Why are they saved? They're going to observe how he's treating his chosen people, how he's bringing them forth, what message he's giving them, how they have survived all the attempts of the heathen to annihilate them. Because that's really what's happened. The, the heathen have been trying to exploit and annihilate us for a few thousand years. And they were not able. And the heathen themselves, believe it, the heathen themselves know. They know there's something about us because they can see. See, they don't want to, most of them, because it's five, six of them are lost, they're not going to acknowledge that they are utterly amazed that we're still around. They're utterly amazed. When they look at our history and they see what we've been through coming across on them slave ships, coming across in the holes in them slave ships, and, 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 and being raped and burned and lynched and, and treated unfairly and always put behind and drugged. When they see, they believe me, they're looking at us and they are in awe. They're like, man, I don't know. They don't want to come out their face and say it, but they know. They know Man, I don't know how y'all make it. I don't know what y'all doing. How y'all keep smiling through all that. How y'all do it. It's because the creator is with us. Because he has called us to himself. Because we belong to him. And he has deemed us to survive. That's why. That's why. And so they observe it. And those that are going to be honest. Those that are going to be truthful. They're going to come and they're going to acknowledge my fathers have done wrong to you. My fathers have tried to destroy you. I repent in dust and ashes in the name of Messiah, the Hebrew Messiah, Yahweh Shai. I acknowledge y'all are the true Hebrews. These are the ones that are going to gain salvation. These are the ones. These are the ones. See, that's why he said, but, but. I would not, but he said, but I, 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 I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen. He's been watching. He knows that. He's very well aware of that. He's very well aware of that. He's going to have his Israelite people to be the head and not the tail. But he's got the heathen watching us. So that the sincere among them can be joined to the kingdom. Can be citizens in the kingdom. And bring glory and honor to the father. You see brothers and sisters, the father's honor and glory is redemption, redemption of lost human beings made in the image, in his image. That's, that's the glory. He has, he has a chosen people. Make no mistake. And yes, he differentiates his chosen people. No question. The Bible is very plain in that regard. But at the same time, he wants people to be saved. And he wants people to be saved. That's his glory, to, to cause people to be delivered from his enemy. Delivered from his enemy. And redeemed that's what he wants. So even when in, in the midst of Egypt, he said, I'm not going to destroy you here because I got heathen watching. I'm going to take you all into the wilderness and spank you all. But I'm going to wait because heathen are watching here in Egypt. I got to watch. I'm going to spank Egypt good, but they, they watching you all. They watching. That's why he says, you know, he tells us uh, in the book of, Revel uh, 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 of Isaiah, he tells us that he's going to, he's going to use us to give the message to the children of Ham. And the children of Ham are going to receive the message. Do you know he says that in Isaiah? He says that. Notice again, Isaiah chapter 19. Isaiah chapter 19. Notice again, Isaiah 19. I'm going to begin at verse 21 and read down to verse 25. Isaiah 19, 21 to 25. Notice what it says. And Yahweh shall be known to Egypt. And the Egyptians shall know Yahweh in that day and shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto Yahweh and perform it. And Yahweh shall smite Egypt 
He shall smite each, it shall smite and heal it, and they shall return even to Yahweh. He shall in, be entreated of them and shall heal them. In that day there shall be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria, and the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. In that day shall Yasha'al be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom Yahweh of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands. Yasha'al, mine inheritance. You see what he did? He said, Egypt and Assyria, the work of his hands, but his inheritance is Yasha'al. See how he separates? So he's going to show through his inheritance, he's going to show the heathen who he is. Who he really is. He's being mis misrepresented. Christianity is misrepresenting who he is. Okay? Islam, misrepresenting who he is. Buddhism, misrepresenting. It all misrepresenting who he is. But through his chosen people who are now awakening, he's going to show who he really is. And he's going to be represented properly. And the heathen are going to notice that. And that's going to cause them to come to the truth. Okay, praise the Most High Yah. So that's what we saw last time. Now, we're going to start today, Ezekiel chapter 20, because you're going to see this theme repeated. Okay, let's go from Ezekiel chapter 20. I'm going to start at verse 14. And go down to verse 24. Ezekiel chapter 20 from verse 14 down to verse 24. Notice what it says. But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen. There he goes again. In whose sight I brought them out. Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands, because they despised my judgments and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbaths, for their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, my eyes spared them from destroying them. Neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness, but I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your fathers, neither observe their judgments, nor defy yourselves with their idols. I am Yahweh, your Most High. Walk in my statutes. And keep my judgments and do them. And hallow my Shabbats. That shall be a sign between me and you. That you may know that I am Yahweh, your Most High. Notwithstanding, the children rebelled against me. They walked not in my statutes. Neither kept my judgments to do them. Which, if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Sabbaths. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew my hand and wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen in whose sight I brought them forth. I lifted up my hand unto them also in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries because they had not executed my judgment but had despised my statutes. And had polluted my Sabbaths. And their eyes were after their eye, their father's idols. Now let's stop here. So brothers and sisters, we can see again. He says the same thing. So he didn't want to destroy them in the midst of the land of Egypt. Because of the heathen that was in Egypt. They're in the wilderness. And they're walking between heathen lands. The heathen people are seeing them walking among the heathen lands. So he's like, I didn't want to destroy them in the midst of the wilderness. Because they were walking among heathen. And I didn't want the heathen to see that. Also, I want you to notice this is the second time that we read in this chapter that he called the land of Israel the glory of all lands. Why would he call the land of Israel the glory of all lands? Well, he also said very plainly it's a land flowing with milk and honey. But it's not just the way the land looks that makes it the glory of all lands. What makes this the glory of all lands, listen very carefully, brothers and sisters, is because he wants, just like he said, uh, he called Mount Sinai, or he called it the holy mountain. He called it, the why? Because he was once, hang, he was there. He was set there and he gave the commandments from there. Well, he calls the, the land of Yasha'al the glory of all lands because he set his people there and he set himself there in Jerusalem. So it became the glory of all lands. He sent Messiah there. That's why. Because he sent the glory of all heaven to the place. Because he put his spirit in a temple in that place. So therefore, it is called the glory of all lands. And that's why right now, 
you know the people that are hanging out there right now that are not his people they're going to have serious problems because they got their filthy hands on land that don't belong to them and when messiah does return and gather his true people those people are especially going to be annihilated and destroyed miserably destroyed because they have no business trying to replace his true people. They have no business hanging out talking about a return, the right of return to a land they never came from. They have no business doing that. See? So he getting ready, and as the Bible showed us plainly, he's going to destroy them off the map from that place. And he's going to put the city there, the new Jerusalem, and it's going to be the glory of all lands. And that's why when you look at Daniel chapter 11, in Daniel chapter 11, I want to show you something. Daniel chapter 11 gives an end time prophecy about that land. Daniel chapter 11, I want to show you something. Daniel 11, I'm going to begin uh, verse 41. Daniel chapter 11 from verse 41. Go down from verse 41 to verse 45. Daniel chapter 11. Notice when he talks about the glorious land, which is the same thing, the glory of all lands. Daniel 40, uh, Daniel 11, 41 to 45. Remember, he's talking to Daniel here. Angel has given Daniel this explanation. He shall enter also into the glorious land. And many shall be overthrown, but these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab and chief of the children of Ammon. And he shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Mizraim shall not escape. He shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt, and Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and to utterly make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end and none shall make him afraid. Who is this he's talking about? It's the Romish church. It's the Romish Catholic church. It's the leadership of the Romish church which controls the Ashkenazi Jews. The Ashkenazi Jews are controlled by Rome. Y'all need to understand that. They are given money because that's their specialty. They're greedy and they're given money and they're given the, the Federal Reserve notes. They were part of the group that created the Federal Reserve and they run the Federal Reserve. But all that comes through the Vatican. The Vatican has its own bank. All transactions on the earth come through the Vatican. Y'all didn't know that, did you? All transactions on earth come through the Vatican. Everything comes through the Vatican's bank. And the Vatican gets a fee on all transactions. All transactions. They control everything. And so uh, when it says he shall enter into the glorious land, that means he's setting up in Israel. In the land of Israel. Well, we can see that. We can see the Ashkenazis are set up there. And also, if you didn't know, the Pope does have a palace in Israel. He has one there. He has a residence there. It's a palace in Israel. He does. And the Bible says he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain. That is Israel. See? So that's why. And when you see that and we see it, it's already there. That's why chapter 12 comes and he says, at that time shall Michael stand up. At that time. That's at the time the false Ashkenazis are there in the glorious land. That's at the time that they're there. That's at the time that they overthrow. When it says Edom, Moab, and Ammon, the chief of the children of Ammon, escape out of his hand, that means there's conflict between them and him. That doesn't mean Edom, Moab, and Ammon belong to him. There are people that have actually gone to some of the lands that are Edom, Moab, and Ammon. Like the land of Jordan is actually Ammon and Moab. And people have gone there. Uh, thinking they're safe. That, the Bible is not telling you that you're going to be safe there. They're going to be at conflict with Rome. Well, let me ask you something. Do you think that there's any conflict between between Ashkenazis and uh, Muslims? Do you think, is there any conflict between the Palestinians, which are really the Philistines? Are there any conflict between them? Is there a conflict between the Ashkenazis and these people in the Middle East? I think there is. I think they all hate them, right? And so Rome is represented by those Ashkenazis there in the Middle East, but the, the the Muslims around them, the Arabs, they hate those Ashkenazis. And if they could, they would destroy them off the map if they could. But the United States is backing them and roam through the United States. See? That's why they're not destroyed. And they'll like to tell you, oh, God is protecting them. <laughs> if God is the devil, he's protecting them because that's who's protecting them. And it's only temporarily because they're going to be destroyed off of that place. But see, that's why it says the glorious land and the glory of all lands, that is the land of Canaan. 
Canaan, which is going to be our land, which is our land, which is going to be redeemed to us, which is going to be cleansed because filthy people have been upon it for a long time. It's got to be cleansed. That's why we're going to read when we get to Ezekiel chapter 38 and Ezekiel chapter 39 that the land has to be cleansed because heathen has been upon it. Their dirty hands has been on it and so it's going to be cleansed. Sin has been upon it and by the time the Most High finishes cleansing it, there's not going to be any taint that there was ever there. There's going to be no sign that they were ever there. Praise the Most High. Yeah. He's going to fix that business. Praise the Most High. But I want you to notice our fathers did not obey the Sabbath. He keeps mentioning that. Did not keep the Sabbath. Polluted his Sabbath. And I want you to also notice the fathers polluted the Sabbath in the wilderness. Why do I bring that up? We should be keeping the Sabbath now. No matter where we are. Remember, they kept it in Egypt. That's why the Pharaoh was so angry at them. Because they started keeping the Sabbath in Egypt. And the Pharaoh was angry. Same thing's going to happen now. We mentioned this in the last, uh, the last Bible study that we did. But they were in the wilderness. Which means they weren't under Pharaoh's control anymore. They were, they were free. They were in the wilderness. And they still were breaking the Sabbath. Like They didn't have to ask anybody for the Sabbath off. You understand? They were out there in the wilderness. Father was taking care of them. And they were not keeping the Sabbath properly. They didn't have to, you know, ask somebody for time off or, uh, or worry about what other people thought. They were, they were free from the land of Egypt and they were in the wilderness. And he was trying to teach them to keep the Sabbath and they were still rebelling against him. And notice he said, they despised my statutes and neither kept my judgments to do them, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. What does that mean? Brothers and sisters, remember... We can only be obedient to the Father's commandments, statutes, and judgments. How? I want you all to tell me. How can we be obedient to the Father's commandments, statutes, and judgments? How can we do that? How do we, how do we, how do we obey His commandments, statutes, and judgments? Which He says gives life. How, does he do, how do we do that? How are we able to be obedient? That's right. By His righteousness. That's exactly right. We are able to be obedient to His commandments by His Spirit of perfect righteousness which He gives us. And He offers that obviously to our fathers. That is not a new concept. It has always been that. It has always been by His Spirit. Those that receive, His Spirit can keep His commandments and live. He said, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Why? Because they have received the Father's righteous spirit. And so he's offered that to them. He gave that to them in the wilderness. He showed himself to them in delivering them from Egypt. But they were still stubbornly hanging on to the gods of Egypt. Right now, right now he's separating his chosen people, even among the heathen lands. He's separating his chosen people, even in the heathen lands, from the rest of the people. He's separating them, and they're being separated by the truth. The truth is the separating knife. It is the separating sword. The people that are obedient to his spirit of truth and righteousness and purity, those are his people. They're in the midst of all the rest of the people, but they're being separated out as lights, as stars among a dark sky. They're being separated out. Okay, and that's why I said don't don't worry if you're by yourself, if you don't have a lot of people around you like you used to when you went to your church. Don't worry about that. If the father's with you, if his spirit is with you, believe me, you're going to be very glad that his spirit was with you. When the angels are by your side, you can't always see them, but they're there. The angels are are there. They're by your side. When you're in your car, when you're driving, when you're going to your job, when you're going to the store, angels are by you. They, the Father has not left you. He's got his angels by you. You're not by yourself. His spirit is with them. His spirit is with you. Okay? And he's separating even now his people. Because when that day comes, brothers and sisters, that's right, in the house, out of the house, especially among the family, angels are with you. So when he separates us from the heathen finally. We will not be as our fathers in the wilderness. We will not be breaking his Sabbath. When he separates us, he's going to know that we're going to be obedient to him. Right now, it's a different story. He's got to work with us, right? Because we fall and we mess up and we're ignorant and we're stubborn and we wild, right? We wild. <laughs> so he got to deal with us. But he's dealing with us. He's spanking us. He's bringing us through many trials, many things that cause us to get on our knees. Many things that cause us to come to him in repentance. He's doing that right now. 
to prepare us so that he can place that seal that we just read about in Revelation chapter 7. He's going to put that seal on us and then he's going to look down and he's going to say, hey, this is my finished work right here. I finished my work on them. They ready. Then he's going to let the winds go and it's going to be on. Okay, it's going to be on at that time. But right now he's working with us. He's dealing with us in the midst of the heathen among whom we dwell. He's working with us in Ur of the Chaldees. He's calling us out of the spiritual Babylon, calling us into his truth. And he's working with us. You see, we are so brainwashed, we don't even realize how much we've been brainwashed. Like I said, I've seen, I'm seeing it and you're seeing it. There's lots of people that even come to a knowledge of who they are as Israelites, right? And they start automatically, without thinking, they start moving into a Christian mode. Even as Israelites, they... They, they can't help it. It's just so brainwashed. They're looking to come and have a service like they did when they were Christians. They want a choir like they did when they were Christians. But, but, but they want everything like they did when they were Christians. Instead of understanding this is not Christianity. But see, we've been so brainwashed into that way. We've been so brainwashed into that culture, into that ideology. The Most High understands that. And slowly, you and me and all of us that are seeking the Father's glory, He's bringing us out of that culture. He's bringing us out of that ideology. He's putting in our hearts and in our minds his truth and his righteousness, even in the midst of the heathen. And he's going to continue to do that. And we praise his name. Our fathers, you know, he he, he was trying to show. And then he said, I'm going to scatter them among the heathen. And that's what, exactly what he did, didn't it? He said, I'm going to scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries because they had not executed my judgments, but had despised my statutes and had polluted my Sabbaths. And as we're going to read, as we continue looking at this chapter, another reason he's doing this is all the rebellious ones that are of the bloodline. I mean, the rebellious ones, see? Because remember, two-thirds of the bloodline is not going to make it. Two-thirds of Abraham's bloodline are not going to make it. So because of that, what he's doing is he first, remember, judgment begins at the house of Yahweh. It begins with his chosen. So what he's doing He's using the truth to separate out the rebellious ones, those that will never repent, unfortunately. Although our fathers suffered so much, although we've been always the bottom, unfortunately, there's two-thirds of us that will not make it. And he's, and he's using the truth to separate them away or separate us from them. And what's left, he's going to continue to try and develop until we are perfectly aligned with his spirit. Until we are perfect reflections of Messiah himself. See? And so that's what that's what we're dealing with. That's the process by which we're going through right now. That's the process we're going through. Right now, as I'm speaking, that's the process we're dealing with. Okay? That's the process we're dealing with. Praise the Most High Yahweh. Let's continue. Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 20. Ezekiel 20 from verse 25. From verse 25, we'll finish with this one. From verse 25, I'm going to read down from verse 25 down to verse 31. Yeah, from 25 to 31. Notice what it says. Wherefore, I gave them also statutes that were not good and judgments whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts in that they, in that they caused to pass through the fire all that opened the room, that I might make them desolate to the end that they might know that I am Yahweh. Therefore, son of man, speak to the house of Yahshua and say unto them, Thus saith the Most High Yahweh, Yet in your father's Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, and that they have committed a trespass against me. And when I had brought them into the land for the which I lifted up my hand to give it to them, then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees, and they offered there their sacrifices, and there they presented the provocation of their offering. There also they made their sweet savor and poured out there their drink offerings. Then I said unto them, what is the high place whereunto ye go? And the name thereof is called Bama unto this day. Wherefore say unto the house of Yasha'al, Thus saith the Most High Yahweh, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers? And ye commit whoredom after their abominations? For when ye offer your gifts, 
When ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And I and shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Yashal? As I live, saith the Most High, Yahweh, I will not be inquired of by you. See? So what he did, what he did, he made them understand why they were in Babylon, what their fathers did, and all of the, the habits they had picked up from their fathers. Brothers and sisters, where are we? What habits have we picked up since we've been in the heathen land? What things have we began to believe that we shouldn't believe that we're in the heathen land that they have taught us? What abominations, what high places are we following that we need to drop? See? It's the same thing. We're in the same situation. He is telling us. You see, brothers and sisters, we do not receive of the Father Spirit without repentance. Right? And so here, he, what he's doing is the Most High is trying to induce among the, the captives of Ezekiel a spirit of repentance by showing them why they're in the situation that they're in. That's why he brought all this out. He said, I don't want to be inquired of by you. Why? Because I need some repentance. I need you to repent. Know the sins of your fathers. Know why you got here. Know what you, how ignorant you are. That's us. He's going to bless us with his spirit. He needs from us repentance. Repentance is far from all of these man-made religions. There's no repentance in Judaism. There's no repentance in Christianity. There's no repentance in Islam. Not any true repentance. Not repentance that receives the Father's Spirit. Not repentance that acknowledges their sin against the only true God and His chosen people. There's no repentance. That's why they're called Laodicea. They think they don't need anything. But the true people of the Most High understand they have fallen short. They understand what the Amen, the faithful and true witness, have said to the Laodiceans. They understand what he said. And they said, yes, that's me. I'm the dog. I'm the one that needs repentance. Yes, it's me. It's my fathers. Oh, that's how we got here. That's why we got strung up by trees. That's why they destroy our cities whenever we start to make something of ourselves. That's why we get thrown in jail. Oh, now I see. He's looking for that. He's looking for that. And slowly, he's bringing us out of all of these heathen ways from which we've been brainwashed into. He's bringing us out from the hundreds and hundreds of years of living in captivity among heathen. He's bringing us out. Slowly. But now, as I said earlier, it's wrapping up. So the speed at which the truth is coming is rapid now. That's why as the Bible said, knowledge shall be increased. So here we are. Like I said, we got seven years until the next Jubilee. And I believe the 144,000 message are going to come full bore at that time. I believe it is. I believe we're getting prepared for that and to receive of his spirit this next seven years. We're going to go through some things. But he's preparing us, brothers and sisters. Some of us ain't going to make it. Some of us he's going to put to sleep. Some of us going to fall by the way. I'm speaking to those that want the truth. Those that are only interested in the glory of the Father. And bringing him honor and glory that's due his name. Those that are tired. Tired of this earth. Tired of the sin of the heathen. Tired of following the heathen. Tired of being brainwashed, exploited, and manipulated by the heathen. Are you tired yet? Are you tired of that? Have you had it? The Father's waiting for us to get to that point. So he can put his spirit on us. That he can mold us into the image of Messiah. You know, I used to play basketball. I used to love basketball. Man, I worked my tail off to get good at basketball. And when I had worked my tail off, I got this coach. And this man, after I worked my tail off, he's got a lot of work to do, he say. Got a lot of work to do. You're not even there yet. You got a lot of work to do. And here I thought, man, what you mean? I was out there in 100 degrees shooting baskets and running up and down the court. And you telling me I'm not ready? See, that's where we are. He's brought us through a lot. But we're not ready yet. Now, this next seven years, he's getting ready to bring us to that level. That level we didn't even think we could get to. He's going to bring us there. But we just have to surrender to him and receive of his spirit. The key thing is his spirit. When he put his spirit on us, there's nothing that's impossible. His word will come to pass. 
We just have to remain in his spirit. Praise the most high. Yah. We're going to stop here. Where we stopped here. At verse. Uh, where we stop here. At verse 31. We're going to come back tomorrow. And start there by the grace of the most high. Let's have a word of prayer.